This problem asks about the time for a cyclist to climb a particular stage in the Tour de France. It's 1,100 meters high, okay? The cyclist has a mass of 85 kilograms, and the cyclist is climbing with a sustained output power of 450 watts. Now, since it's an output power, that means this. <clears throat> power is just equal to the change in energy divided by time. Well, the change in energy in this case is just a change in gravitational potential energy. That's what the cyclist is getting at the end of the process. And so we can just write power is equal to change in gravitational potential energy divided by the time and then we're all set to get started. Our preparation step then reduces to this. What are we going to call the initial and the final states? And the initial state is just going to be the cyclist at the bottom of the mountain. So here's our cyclist at the bottom of the mountain. Our final state is the cyclist at the top of the mountain. In between time, <clears throat> the cyclist has increased his height by a distance of 11 100 meters. Okay, so that's the height from the start to the finish. We can take this point as the zero of our potential energy. So here's our initial. Here's our final. And the power in this case, as we saw, is just equal to the change in gravitational potential energy divided by the time. We're given the power, we're trying to solve for the time, so we rearrange this expression to look like this. The time interval is just equal to delta UG divided by the power. And this makes sense because this is how many joules are necessary. This is how many joules per second can the cyclist provide. The net result is we're going to get a time in seconds. And with that, we're ready for our solution. And our solution is fairly straightforward. Our time interval is equal to the change in potential energy divided by the power. Well, the change in potential energy is m times g times h. The height of the mountain that the cyclist is climbing is 1,100 meters. The mass of the cyclist is 85 kilograms, and the power the cyclist can provide is 450 watts. Net result, we have everything we need to solve for the time interval. And when we do this, we get a time interval of 2,036 seconds. And then we're going to put that in minutes, and we'll do two significant figures because this is a two significant figure problem, and we end up with 34 minutes. Okay, 34 minutes for the climb. Now, it turns out this is a fairly straightforward problem to assess because this is a, a specific climb that's part of the Tour de France. And if you look up the actual winning times for cyclists in recent years, people have been climbing this in about 37 minutes. And so the result that we have, 34 minutes, is a little bit less than that. That makes sense because this climb has some hairpin turns and there's other kind of like um, difficulties that a cyclist is apt to run in. And so we'd expect the theoretical minimum time to be less, but not much less, than the actual time that's observed in the world. And so our result makes sense. <laughs>